In this video, I'll go over using a MIDI Expression USB pedal interface for hands-free control of Cubase. Even if you don't own a MIDI Expression device, this video can still teach you a lot about your options for controlling Cubase with MIDI. Far from the simplest application to control, the automation possibilities in Cubase can be a bit overwhelming. But with this complexity comes a lot of flexibility, and by watching this video, you'll learn how to leverage that flexibility for your own particular needs. I'm going to teach you three ways you can use your MIDI expression to control Cubase, and the one you choose depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Method number one, record to a MIDI or instrument track. If you would like to use your pedals alongside a MIDI keyboard to make adjustments while you play, then this is probably the best method to use. It's easy to set up and simple to use. Method number two, quick track controls. If you would like to control some aspect of the Cubase mixer channel or a plugin that doesn't support MIDI, then this is the best option for you. It allows you to control any aspect of the mixer channel, including its inserts and sends, on a per track basis. Meaning, you can have your pedals assigned to different controls depending on which track is selected. Method number three, generic remote. If you would like to control something that's not mixer related, like play, stop, record, then you need to use a generic remote. Far from user friendly, it enjoys the greatest scope in Cubase and allows you to control almost any parameter or function. I'm going to describe each method in detail, but I'll break the video up into chapters so you can skip ahead to the one that interests you. To be honest, they're all worth watching as different methods come in handy at different stages in the creative process. If your pedal movements are intended to be a part of your performance, then it only makes sense to record them as MIDI. If you're using a virtual instrument, then the setup is dead simple. And if you're using an audio plugin with MIDI support, then all you need to do is add a MIDI track to your project. First, let's look at how our pedals are set up. I have an expression pedal and a foot switch connected to my MIDI expression I.O. And the settings are all default. So the pedal is sending CC7 and the switch is sending CC64. In Cubase, I'll add an instrument track and load contact. And I'll pick the muted trumpet. And now we just make sure the input is set to all MIDI inputs, which it is. Now, whenever the track is record enabled or monitored, data from the MIDI expression and any other MIDI devices is merged and sent to contact. The expression pedal is sending CC7, which is volume in virtually all instruments, and the foot switch is sending CC64, which is sustain. With absolutely no setup, we're already good to go. And now when we record, all the MIDI data from my keyboard and the I.O. is stored in the same track. And when we play back, we can see and hear the automation. We can also open the MIDI track and see and edit the data if we wish. Some CC values are hard-coded in contact, and the same probably goes with some other instruments as well. For contact, CC7 is volume, CC1 is modulation, and CC10 is panning, and they can't be unassigned. Let's look what happens when I try to learn CC7 to another parameter. <laughs> Now they both move, which is probably a bug, but could also be useful. So if you want to control some other parameter, in contact anyway, you might need to change your expression pedal CC. I'll use CC20, which I know isn't already assigned in contact. And now I can learn the pedal to any parameter without issue. Some audio plugins like Guitar Rig also support MIDI control. 
These plugins create virtual MIDI ports, and by adding a separate MIDI track, you can route MIDI to them in the same way you would a virtual instrument. Set the output to the track that has guitar rig on it, and the input to your MIDI expression. These preset changes shouldn't be recorded, so I'm going to disable record and enable monitoring instead. I want the expression pedal to control a macro, and I want to use the foot switch to switch presets. Because I want to trigger both next and previous presets, I'm going to change my foot switch to dual CC mode, which simulates two switches using short and long presses. And now I can learn my controls. In the last chapter, we looked at controlling plugins by sending MIDI directly to the plugin. In this chapter, we'll talk about quick track controls. While slightly more cumbersome to use, quick track controls offer the following advantages. One, we can control not only plugins, but virtually any parameter associated with a Cubase mixer track. Two, we can control plugins even if they don't have native support for MIDI control. Number three, we can have our pedals control different parameters depending on which track is selected. To start, we need to assign the MIDI expression to track quick controls. In Cubase, go to Devices, Device Setup, and then select Track Quick Controls. Set the input and output to your MIDI expression and click Apply. And then check the MIDI Learn box. Now I'll select the first quick control and move the expression pedal. I could also learn the switches from last chapter, but I'd like to leave them dedicated to auditioning guitar rig presets. Now I spot a potential issue. Both control 1 and 5 are set to channel 1 and CC20. So to be safe, I'll change, I'll change this one to something else. I'll click Apply and OK. Now if I come over here and I click on Quick Controls, I can assign my expression pedal to control virtually any parameter associated with the channel strip. So much so that finding a parameter quickly becomes overwhelming. Luckily there's a Learn function. Click the Learn icon, select the Quick Control to Learn, and then move an on-screen control. Finally, click the Learn icon again when you're done. The real power of track quick controls is evident when I select another track. Now we can reassign the same pedal to a new parameter. And when we switch between tracks, the control gets remapped on the fly. Pretty powerful stuff. And if we look at the contact track, You'll see that it has predefined assignments, probably because it's a VST3 plugin. And if that's not impressive enough, if we change instruments, the control assignments change along with it. In order to record those movements, we'll need to use the read and write automation buttons. Now we can hear the effect because the pedal movements have been written to an automation lane. If we click on this down arrow and select the parameter we want to view, we can see and edit the automation we've written. There are a couple limitations to using quick track controls. 
One, not all parameters are exposed to host automation. For example, in Guitar Rig, you can change presets with MIDI, but you can't with Quick Track controls. Number two, because you can control different parameters depending on which track is selected, it's easy to forget what's controlling what. And lastly, with Quick Track controls, you can only control things related to the selected track. But if you want to control something outside of that scope, like play or stop, then you need to use a generic remote. And that's what we'll talk about next. In chapter one, we looked at controlling virtual instruments by sending MIDI directly to the plugin. In chapter two, we took a look at quick track controls and their per track assignments. In chapter three, we're gonna talk about the generic remote. Using generic remote, you can control almost any parameter or function inside of Cubase. Of particular interest to hands-free operation with the MIDI expression, we're going to use it with this boss foot switch to make the ultimate tracking tool. Imagine we're recording guitars and we need hands-free control of record, stop, playback, and monitor. This is the tool that we're going to make. First, I'll open the MIDI Expression Control application and put both switches into dual CC mode. This will allow each switch to send two different CCs depending on how long it's pressed, effectively giving us four controls in total. And I'll change their CC values so that they're all unique. Now let's go back to the device setup in Cubase and click on the plus sign to add a generic remote. We'll set the input and output to the MIDI expression and click apply. Now there's a whole lot of crap in here that I don't need. I'll leave four controls for my switches and delete everything else. I'll give them some meaningful names and now I'll click MIDI Learn. All right, short press the first switch, long press the first switch, short press the second switch, and finally long press the second switch. Now in the bottom half of the window, we can configure what these switches will do. I want to be able to monitor, record, and playback all without going back to my computer. To accomplish this, we're going to control three commands. Start, activate punch in, and stop. They're all related to the transport. Start, activate punch in, and stop. The last switch will be used to toggle monitoring, which is associated with the mixer. We'll choose selected and monitor. Because these switches act like push buttons, we'll select the push button and toggle flags so that Cubase toggles the monitor button every time the switch is pressed. And because we don't ever want Cubase to record this as automation, we'll select Not Automated. Whenever you make changes to your generic remote, you need to export your settings where they'll be lost. The next time Cubase loads up, it's going to look for that XML file. If it doesn't find it, your settings are gone. It's worth mentioning that I have Auto Monitoring set to While Record Running. I'm not sure what it defaults to, so I'm including it here just in case. All right, so let's give it a try. I will long press the first button so auto punch in is activated. To start recording, I'll just short press the first button. And then to stop, I'll short press the second. To go back again, I just press the stop one more time. And using just these two buttons, I can easily record multiple takes. If I want to hear my instrument without recording, I long press the second button to toggle monitoring. If I want to listen to my last take, 
I long press the first button to toggle auto punch in and then short press it to play. The only thing I don't like about this setup is having to press stop twice to go back. So we'll fix that using a macro. Go to file and then key commands and then click show macros. Now I already have one here, so I'm gonna delete it first. Okay, so click new macro and give it a meaningful name like double stop. And then come up here and find transport and scroll down to stop. Select it and press add command twice and click okay. Now we'll go back to our generic remote setup and we'll change this from transport to macro and select double stop. Don't forget to apply and export to save. Let's give it a try. Perfect.